Well, we have an interesting situation in the Gulf of Mexico. There are uh, several hundred oil rigs down there that are basically dead. You know, they're, they're uh, uh, you know, no longer producing oil and it's just trash, right? And uh, two th 240 of them, actually, uh, serving over 2,000 oil and gas wells that are listed by the Interior Department as qu what's called idle iron. They are severely damaged, not operating, no longer economically viable. They pose economic, uh, environmental, and safety hazards, uh, not just to navigation, but also, you know, the possibility of more spills. These things break down. You know, oil comes spilling out, whatever, 240 of them. And so uh, the new guy who is running, uh, Scott Angle is his name, or maybe it's Angel. It's A-N-G-E-L-L-E. Uh, used to be an oil and gas executive, and now he is in charge of the Interior Department's Bureau of Safety and Environmental Enforcement, which, by the way, doesn't have the mandate of expanding oil or gas production. It has the mandate of maintaining safety in the oil patch, as it were, in this case, out in the ocean. And uh, that agency was, was created by the Obama administration in the wake of the Deepwater Horizon, to make sure that the deep water horizon doesn't happen anymore. And the first few months that this guy was in his, in his job, records show, this according to the New York Times, was traveling between Washington, Texas, and his native Louisiana to meet with executives of most of the top offshore oil companies, including some repeatedly cited for safety violations. The gatherings, by the way, were behind closed doors. In fact, he told people to text him and call him so there wouldn't be public records that could be uh, called under a Freedom of Information Act. This is bizarre. And they're rolling back these rules. So uh, he, on the line with us is Julio Rivera. He is the editorial director at Reactionary Times, columnist with Newsmax, right-wing news and politics, reactionarytimes.com. You can tweet him at, oh, yeah, it's Julio. Uh, to presumably, I'm guessing, Julio, tell us why this is a good thing. Okay, um, I'll be happy to tell you why this is a good thing. Listen, the deep water horizon, uh, you know, explosion, that was a kind of an isolated thing. It, there, there's not a systematic issue in place with this sort of thing, like where, the, where these things are happening all the time. Granted, when they do happen, they're terrible. But let's not forget that the Obama administration waited over 40 days before they ever even did anything to address this. Well, they had so, to wait for it to get you know, capped and shut down. <laughs> Come on. No, they, but they didn't, do, they didn't do anything for a long time. It's not like they were rushing you know, to the aid of this thing when it did happen. But listen, just to, to talk about regulations in general, the stripping back of these regulations, you, 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 you talk about the economy coming back, and it came back. This isn't about the economy, year. Julio. This is about protecting you and me and our food supply. I mean, you know, do you want shrimp that are contaminated with hydrocarbons from, from oil spills? It's, it, it'll give you cancer. I mean, it, do you want the, exactly. the environment no, destroyed I, I, in the Gulf I, I, again? Listen, Tom, there's a certain level... Of, of importance and usefulness for these types of regulations, but not to the point where it's so onerous and it's so overlapping that it puts businesses, it hurts businesses, it, it hurts their ability. We've had this conversation in terms of net neutrality in the past with the smaller ISPs not being able to do business, not being able to get loans from banks because of, you know, the onerous levels of overlapping regulation. This is the same thing. You know, and listen, there's a lot. This, These companies this is not the same thing, Julio. This, and, and, and by the way, the small ISPs, you know, if, if they're being harmed, they're being harmed by the monopolistic practices of Comcast, AT&T, and others. But, but that's exactly. a whole but completely the, separate the argument. Practice is the, being one, one, of the, one, of, one of the regulations that was rolled back, which predates Obama, I believe, uh, was that if you're going to put an oil rig into the Gulf, or anywhere offshore, now that Trump has opened up all of America, with the exception of Florida, to offshore drilling, if you're going to put an oil rig out there, that oil rig is going to have a certain lifespan, 10, 20, 30, 40 years, whatever it is. And at the end of that lifespan, you have to pay to dismantle it and clean up the mess. Now, what, you know, and, and you have to either be able to prove that your company has enough assets that you can afford to do that and that you're not going to go bankrupt in the process, or you have to place a bond saying, you know, that, that is enough money to pay for the cleanup. That was just done away with, which means that these 240 oil rigs that are sitting out there in the Gulf that are just, you know, creaking and wasting away and, and dangerous to everything from navigation to the fish, now to us, 
are, you know, we're going to have to, you and I, through our tax dollars, are going to have to pay to recover these things so that this oil industry that you love so much could be more profitable. And by the way, they're insanely profitable. I don't get it. Well, listen, they're, 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 that's yes and no. And listen, first of all, I'm going to agree with you on that one, Tom. You know, that was that one little sliver that one little thing there that you mentioned is that you're absolutely correct. We should, they should be responsible for having to remove these things or prove that they have the ability to do so if they do become burdensome. I'm not going to disagree with you there, not at all. But look at the level at which these uh, businesses get taxed. You know, they got a little. This bit isn't of about taxes, tax Julio. Money. It's about it, it's about safety rules. It is about taxes too, because listen, these businesses are necessary. We need oil. We have to have it. You know, so these are private businesses that are going ahead and doing it. But if we're making it impossible to turn a profit or making it so difficult to do what they do because of all this regulation, you know, what, what, how, how else is it going to get done, Tom, is my question to you. We can't make it too difficult for the capitalistic system to work here. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, Julio, that you have so little faith in human ingenuity and, and, and capitalists, frankly. Um, I, I have found, historically, in starting businesses and being in the business world, that if something's difficult or if there are challenges, whether they're regulatory, market challenges, or just simply product development chance, you know, uh, difficulties, that smart people figure out ways around that. Smart people figure out how to do it. And frankly, if a business particularly when we're talking about oil, you know, if, if a business cannot operate safely then, and profitably at the same time, they shouldn't be operating. Let somebody else come in who can do it. They're, you know, they, act, by the way, it was not ExxonMobil who's asking for these changes. It's these small operations out of Louisiana and Texas that, who have been a great, you know, that this guy who's now running the safety bureau used to work with and for, <laughs> who, have, who have been you know, many of them have, have been abandoning rigs. They've got lousy safety records. Yeah. One of them just had a guy die last, you know, a couple months ago as a result of a safety violation. And, and you know, I, I say, well, yeah, you know, if these, if these small operators that are trying to... Isolated incidents. But, Tom, you're contradicting yourself. You're saying, you're talking about how it's bad to have, you know, uh, uh, monopolies in place. But these very regulations that you're defending are the things that go ahead and empower and strengthen these monopolies. Why do you think that a Jit Pai, you know, for net neutrality, had all the smaller ISPs in his corner defending him about he didn't. stripping back net neutrality? He didn't. Neutrality. And, 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 and stop going back to net neutrality, Julio. This has nothing to do with that. This, you it know. doesn't have to put the concept. It's the same thing. Overlapping layers of regulation only help the very no, big, just for the record, the Ajit Pai is proposing massively block. regulating the internet rather than simply saying no. You, you individual companies, uh, you know, I don't want to turn this into a, I, you know, you're you're trying to change the subject, Julio, and I'm not going to let it happen. Why should why should we be allowing? You know, first of all, don't you think it's bizarre and corrupt that that an oil industry shill? is now in charge of the agency that oversees safety in the oil industry. You know, that's, the way that you're, that's, the, that's the way that you're painting it, but you're always going to have somebody who's from within that industry, an expert that's assigned to that type of a position, whether it's Why? Barack Obama's president or whether it's Donald Trump's president. You always go to, you always have somebody with experience here. All righty, I leave you with the last word. Julio Rivera, the editorial director at Reactionary Times, columnist at Newsmax, right, right wing news and politics, reactionarytimes.com, and you can tweet him at oh yeah, it's Julio. Julio, thanks for dropping by. Thank you so much, Tom. Always yeah. great to talk to you. Okay, have a, a good talk with you too. Have a great day. We'll be back. We've got a lot of news.